Right, what's up YouTube? I hope you guys are doing well. Um, it's been about a year since I posted a teaser of that thing behind me. Um, I was printing one of these little 3D Benchy dogs. Um, um, I don't know whose it is. Uh, this was one of the things that came on the card from Creality. And um, I was printing that and it was in PLA. So obviously, it's all easy. Um, as all of us know, well, most of us at least know, that are you know, into 3D printing, PLA is one of the easiest materials to print with. Um, it's when you get to your more exotic materials like ABS, PEDG, TPU, that kind of stuff, that you start running into trouble if things aren't set up correctly. So. It's been about a year now. Um, I did my first free cab video probably about two weeks ago, I think. Um, so I've had a year to mess around on this thing to get myself acquainted with it and to get into the 3D printing culture, if I can call it that. Today's video is going to be about one of the gotchas that a lot of people told me I was making up. Um, and also about one of the improvements that we're going to be doing to that thing. So this is going to be a long-ish video. Strap in, get yourself a cup of coffee, cup of tea, some biscuits maybe, and let's dive into it. Alright, so this video is not going to be about ragging anyone. Um, I'm going to tell you about my experiences, what I found, um, what caught me out, and what I used to actually get my printer sorted and get it printing right. Alright, so for those of you who don't know, this is a Creality CR10, the V3 version. Um, now, I'd say sort of mid-range printer, definitely not high-end, um, but good enough for me. Now, um, I referenced three different channels throughout this year. Um, a heap more others, but from these three channels um, and our 3D printing community that is actually local to me, I was able to get started pretty easily. All right, so the first channel was Chip, um, who does quite a bit of 3D printing. Uh, this guy is, you know, sort of home mechanic style. Um, so he's very practical, he's very hands-on. Then the second guy's channel that I referenced was Angus from Maker's Muse. Um, and the third guy, which definitely helped, I think, the most, was Michael Laws from Teaching Tech. Now, for those of you who don't know, anyone that tells you you can print out of the box, they don't know what they're talking about. If it comes to PLA, most probably with basic setup, you could print out of the box. How accurate your prints are going to be, that's another story. So, once I'd progressed past this falling in love stage with my printer, you know, the honeymoon stage, the oh, this is so good and this is so nice past that stage into the more technical stuff. Um, this is where I started running into problems. So, the first thing you do when you get your printer, you get a square, you get a measuring tape, you get a set of vernier calipers, preferably digital, and you square up and tram 
the bottom frame of your 3D printer. So what's the bottom frame? Well, that's literally this frame that the 3D printer, the bed, everything else is based on. All right. The second thing is you'll need a solid work surface. All right. It has to be level as nuts. All right. So anyone that tells you, hey, you can just put it down on a tabletop and you'll be fine. Well, there are a couple of gotchas with that. If your work surface is very light and you're printing fine detail, vibrations are going to become an issue. So get away from that as quickly as possible. Um, I've seen a couple of guys that have actually taken concrete blocks that have been cast perfectly level and flat. They've put that on their tables and then put the printer on that because solid mass you know it's going to take quite a bit of energy to move that and if your if your bottom base moves around you're going to have problems it's it's as easy as that all right so that's the one thing then the second thing is getting your gantry set up now so what's the gantry the gantry is the thing that moves up and down all right that is the next part that you have to get perfectly squared and aligned so you have to check your corners you have to check that the thing is upright you have to brace the thing you have to do everything possible within reason to get this thing a perpendicular and b square now perpendicular and square are not the same thing right so square is going to be getting this part square to the frame all right and then perpendicular so those uprights measured out with a square from the bottom of your frame to get them perpendicular with that because believe me that will bite you in the butt as well all right so once all that is said and done you need to level your bed which guys I've seen guys taking a spirit level and leveling the bed. <laughs> Don't do that. That does not work. When the guys talk about bed leveling, they're talking about the distance between the bed and the nozzle. Okay. Your bed has to be level to that in the middle and the four outer corners of the bed. All right. Herein lies the problem that I had. The CR10V3 has got dual Z-axis or Z-axis, depending on where you are in the world, lead screws. Right? So behind this upright and behind that upright are two stepper motors with collets and lead screws, which moves the gantry up and down. Now these are supposed to be more accurate than your non dual z-axis um, gantries so in other words gantries that have just got one z lead screw that goes up and down and it will pull the other side up with it all right for the longest time i was having first layer issues that I started getting to a point where I thought I'm not I'm not going to be able to get this right and I just stood there with a spatula pushing down prints that started lifting I tried different layer heights I tried um, over extrusion on the first layer and to a certain extent this worked all right yes i leveled my bed i followed all the tutorials i did exactly as i could um, 
Michael Laws from Teaching Tech has got a whole YouTube channel which I will sorry a whole website which I will link in down in this description down below as to how to set your printer up now I followed everything I followed everything and once everything was said and done my printer was doing one hell of a lot better all right but I was still having first layer issues on big prints all right so the smaller prints weren't that much of an issue big prints that spanned across quite a wide area of the bed um, when the head would travel in one direction it would put the filament down pretty well but when it came back in the other direction it was half as if the head was crashing into or the nozzle was crashing into um, that filament and when it was flat it was lifting it up as it was moving back and forth so i would have these very wavy ripply kind of of first layers and like i say i tried everything um, one thing i can tell you from my experience is that using the paper trick to level your nozzle is not advisable now the reason i say that and please bear with me don't don't chow me out because i'm saying this all right there's a reason that i'm saying this if you go and you measure up a piece of paper all right and you use that to zero out the distance between your bed and your nozzle I don't know if you can see that um, uh, let's get some all right so there can you see it can you see it all right so let's do that that should be a little bit easier to read all right so 0 0.10 millimeters all right so 0 0.1 millimeters we can probably switch that off again so i was using the paper trick and the guys use this to to set the level between the nozzle and the bed so that the nozzle is going to be even height across the bed all right this doesn't work all right it does not work and please bear with me i will show you my complete process in the end and you will see that what i do does work not my idea this i learned from angus from makers muse all right um so i tried all of that okay and things just weren't working all right i thought that i was going to lose it um, I really thought look this is going to be it for me I'm I'm not going to make this journey this is going to be another failed attempt at doing something that just I'm not cut out for all right so on our local 3d printing forum um, I started talking to the guys one of the guys was sarcastic enough to say, well, welcome to PEG printing. This is what happens. And to tell you the honest truth, that comment did nothing more than piss me off even further. All right. Um, this game is expensive enough where I'm sitting and costly enough that an answer like that doesn't do anything to help anyone so I still persevered I tried everything that I could in the end I started having thoughts because I heard guys talking about z-axis drift okay so in other words your if you'd level out your z-axis and it was perfectly level um, once the motors went into standby or when you switched your printer off one side would go down 
right? So I started thinking, well, isn't that maybe what's happening? Is that I'm doing this and I'm trying to get everything level because you should not need to re-level your bed every single print. And I was basically having to do this, all right? Now, the problem with the Z-axis sort of, or Z-axis, when it loses power going out of square or going out of tram, whatever you want to call it, is that when that motor takes up the slack again, it's not going to take it up at exactly the same height. And while you are prepping for your 3D print, that motor is, once you've set everything up, going to lose its tram again once the motor goes into standby because it's not going to hold the whole time otherwise it heats the motor up it does everything so i printed it's here somewhere so i printed this block all right um, and what i used it for was to actually set i would put this um, like that and I would have it come under my z-axis and that I would do on both sides so then I would manually take the lead screw and I would it's this side that was giving me the problems by the way and then I would take that lead screw and I would manually turn it to where both those heights were the same now I would do this just just before printing when my printer was heated up, my bed was heated, and I was basically ready to go, right? I was basically ready to put down and start printing. Um, and I did this so that the motors wouldn't lose that level. Now, I had semi-good success with this. Um, it worked but it wasn't perfect um, and it was by no means always repeatable because of going into standby regaining but then not regaining at exactly the same position you know all of this stuff um, and guys if i'm not using the correct terminology i apologize all right like i say i'm a year in now and this is what i found all right so that is the long and the short of it um i told our community listen i think this is what's happening um i think my my z-axis is going out of square going out of tram call it what you want and the guys told me no this can't be it doesn't happen um vortex uh, one of my channel supporters been doing 3d printing for years has never had this problem um so I was sort of starting to doubt myself um, and I was thinking look you're you're just something is wrong you, you're, you're not doing you're not doing it correctly something something is wrong and I had by then put in numerous amounts of man hours into this printer to try and get this thing to stay true um, to not go out of tram, out of level, out of whatever you want to call it. And nothing I did amongst all the YouTube videos I watched actually helped. In the end, what I ended up doing was saying, all right, so bugger everyone that's telling me that this can't be the issue because I am now 99.999% sure that my z-axis is actually the issue so i started searching on youtube google everything about z z-axis alignment and funnily enough i came across the site that is called tiny machines i'll link it in down below um, that made a kit 
that would, with a timing belt and two pulleys, tie your two lead screws together to stop exactly this problem. So then I got to thinking, well, hang on, I might not be as stupid or as crazy as I think I am. There might actually be something to this. And so I started investigating a little bit further. Now, these kits aren't expensive. I'll link it in down below. But the problem is getting stuff here, and especially one of the way import VAT, the exchange rate, and just a myriad of crud at this point in time in the world is going on. It was just impossible for me to be able to take out, in the end, a grand to buy this kit. All right, and I mean, this kit costs tuppence. I think it's something like 24 US dollars for the kit. I stand under correction. I will, at the time of editing of this video, bring in a screenshot of this so that you can see. But the thing is just that after our customs, after our, you know, the import duties, the VAT, the exchange rate, the everything, this thing was just nearing stupid expenses. All right, so the next thing I had to do was I had to see if there was a possibility for me to build something temporary to see if this would alleviate my issues. So let's go over to the printer. I'll show you what I did. Now keep bearing in mind this thing has been running now and I've been printing quite a bit since doing this to my printer and I have had a 1000% improvement. Now, so like I said, bear in mind, this was done temporarily just to see if I could get this thing sorted. So let's go over to the printer. I'll show you what I did. All right, guys, so I'm going to hope that this actually comes out in the shot and that you can see what I did. Um, so from my one supplier, um, I went and got if it'll focus, there we go. I went and got um, a set of um, G2 timing pulleys. Now this is an eight millimeter um, hole that it has so that it goes over the lead screw and it's a 20 millimeter um, two mil pitch. So that's a G2 timing pulley. Then the other thing I did, if I can get to it over there, is I 3D printed up a bracket and I put on just a single tensioner pulley. All right. Now, if you look over here, I don't know if it's going to focus. I hope it does. Let me try and do that. All right. So you can see there's a little bit of a funny mark on the belt. Now this is because this is open-ended belt which is a yay amount cheaper than the actual closed loop G2 timing belts that I've had to buy. Alright so I put this together temporarily I tried everything to splice these things and in the end a little bit of super glue time and love is all it took to make this belt. Um, now you might be asking, well as soon as you've got something, why did you replace or why are you going to replace it? The, the answer is, this joint over here isn't perfect. And when this part rounds either of these pulleys, um, so you can see there's one on that side and obviously one on this side, I can hear a little bit of a tooth jump all right which means that this thing could still be bouncing 
around. Um, you know, it could still be going out of true, even with all that. Okay. Now, this open-ended timing belt, I think, is like something like, let's call it 30 bucks. Okay. Now, if I'm talking bucks, I'm talking my currency, Namibian dollars, um, which is at one hell of a lot cheaper than the closed loop belt that I've had to buy. All right. So the closed loop belt, if we go back here, this is the closed loop belt over here. All right. So this is 160 bucks. And the open-ended timing belt was like 30 bucks. All right, for a meter. So this was a temporary solution. So what we're going to do today is we're going to, these pulleys are going to stay on here, but I'm going to show you how to set this up from the word go. So I'm going to take the pulleys off. I'm going to take all of this off. But we're going to redesign the bracket because I want to be able to adjust the new belt um, with three of these pulleys. So in other words, what is going to happen is two of the pulleys are going to be sitting on the outside of the belt and one is going to be sitting on the inside. And I'm going to be able to adjust the tension of this belt like so. All right. So this pulley is going to move. These two are going to be fixed. The middle one is the one that's actually going to move and adjust the tension of the belt. All right. So I'm going to take you guys along for the design of the bracket that's going to go onto this all right we're going to keep more or less the same features as this bracket has it has recessed holes um, for the screws to go through um, it ties into this profile just with two screws and it uses a kick plate method at the back to push against the back of this profile all right now with the amount of tension that's going to be on here you do not have to tighten it so tight that you actually force these lead screws into a certain direction all right all you want is you want this belt going around and making contact with as many of these teeth as possible all right that's going to stop the belt from slipping all right so after that lengthy <laughs> explanation um i do hope that it makes sense um I do think that this is going to permanently sort my problems. Um, like I say, that was a temporary fix. I explained to you why I want to do this. So without any further ado, let's go into my design software that I like to use. Freeware, doesn't cost anything. Um, that I've also, within this year, spent quite a bit of time on in learning how to actually work with it. All right, so let's go over to that, and I'll catch you in a bit. All right, so this is, this is FreeCAD that we're in right now. Now, you can see I've already designed this thing. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to close it out, and I'm going to take you guys along for the ride so that you can see how I actually... Um, how I actually design this. Now, I'm not going to put a picture in the corner or anything so that you can see my ugly mug. Um, it's not worth it. I want you guys to concentrate on what we are actually going to be doing over here. Now, as you can see, this is um, what we're going to have in the end when we're done. All right, so these two holes over here So these two holes over here are where the profile is going to be, where the screws are going to go through the profile, okay, or to the profile with the T-nuts. All right, so this surface and this surface are going to be against the profile, all right. This is the kick plate, that's the top piece. Um, then we actually have two holes 
for the idler pulleys that are just going to keep the belt in place and we have the slot that we're going to use to move the pulley back and forth with all right um, I do think that that is pretty much self-explanatory and that you understand how this thing is going to operate uh, the one thing I might do is I might actually take that shaved corner and swap it out for an arc we'll see when I'm inside there all right so let's close this thing out I'm going to bring in a new um, design okay not going to work in the other one so I'm going to go into that as you can see I'm in the part design workbench now everything I'm going to do for this tensioner is going to be done in the part design bench I'm not going to use any of the other benches so all I'm going to do is I'm going to use sketches and padding and I'll make this all right so what we're going to do first is we're going to go into the tasks view we're going to create a body and then we're going to create a sketch on the x y plane all right so we're going to be looking at this thing from the top all right now just a little trick um, and this is what I'm going to reference off to make sure that this thing works properly is I'm going to use my origin point so we're going to need a couple of measurements first off and those measurements are going to be the following all right so the first measurement we're going to need is going to be from this part of the profile to the back of the belt all right because I want the other idler pulleys to be on the back end of the belt okay so on the flat side of the belt all right so I need this measurement and I need the profile measurement over here and the profile measurement over here then a couple of the other measurements that we're going to need is we're going to need the outer diameter of the pulley the inner diameter so the bit that the belt runs against and the whole diameter all right so I've gone and I've taken a couple of measurements as you can see um, here we have the belt so the thickness of the belt so that I can get a spacing between the pulleys all right so that's 1.5 millimeters then I have the pulley itself with the three dimensions so we have the outer of the pulley at 18 millimeters we have the thing that the belt will run against so the inside of the pulley that's 12 millimeters and then the hole that you actually use to put a screw or whatever through that's five millimeters all right then so the next that we have is i have the measurement from the back end of the profile to the belt all right um, that's 26.04 millimeters so we'll use 26 i mean 0.4 millimeters it's not going not going to kill the cat and then over here i have my profile measurements now near enough this could be my caliper as well it's not the best caliper um, but this is supposed to be a 20 by 20 profile which actually means that um, that this notch is going to be 10 mil um, away all right so the thing that the T nuts have to get into 20 mil the half of that is going to be 10 mil all right so with that let's jump back into FreeCAD quickly all right so I'm just quickly going to take the poly tool and I'm just going to draw something up all right now the poly tool just for basic shapes works pretty well all right now I'm going to push keyboard um, letter M to get different um, you see we've got a different tool there and I'm just clicking to put down points now you can see it's defaulted to a right angle which I'm going to use um, 
and then we're going to go back to that all right so this is the basic shape uh, not not precise I mean this is just an approximation of what we're gonna have okay now you can see there's eight degrees of freedom guys if your your sketch isn't suitably constrained do not go and try and pad this thing because it means that stuff can move around and it's going to mess up your sketch in the end all right so what i'm going to do now um that's our basic shape it works it's what we've got um i'm going to go to the construction view now you can see all of these icons have changed from white to blue okay so white is actually what you're working with blue is going to be sort of a background um you know it's like ley lines that you you know they're there but you just use them to align stuff with okay um so i'm just going to put down just a couple of lines now you'll see what i what i do with this later on all right so now these little lines that you can see these are showing that the lines are perpendicular to this axis over here all right um so this axis is y and this is x all right so you can see that from our cube over here and from our drawing all right and z is what you're looking at okay so you're looking at this thing from as this cube says the top all right so now i've got that um i want to just more or less center that um and what i'm going to do with these lines is i'm going to use these lines to set the axes of my pulleys all right so all right so now i'm going to take a circle i'm going to draw one nope I don't want that constraint there. Um, I want that constraint to there. And I want this constraint to there. All right, so if I move that and I move that, there we go. All right, so that circle is now constrained. I, all right. Then I'm going to draw three more circles. This doesn't have to be perfect. We'll set this up now to be perfect. All right, so again, So that, all right, it's not constrained to there yet. Constrain that. All right, that's what I want to see. And we're going to do three more circles. All right, now, guys, this isn't perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect right now. Just keep that in mind. All right, and then we're going to do that. Yeah, I know, it's over constrained. So let's just take that off. So where you see that, okay, I want 
that and that to also be constrained. Right, so now we've got three axes on this that have been constrained. One and two. All right, now the next thing that I'm going to do going to put a dot on that and a dot on that and then I'm going to constrain them to that all right and I'm going to say that this gap no no go away I want that one and that one. I want that gap to be two millimeters. Now guys, this is going to become confusing very, very quickly. So don't pay too much heed to what I'm doing right now. I'm just getting points in here that I can that I can use to, oh come on, that one, that one, and then again over here, all right, And then I want that gap and that gap again to be two millimeters. All right, so now you can see that my circles have changed up a bit and done funny things to get this gap right. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by setting the diameters. All right, so I'm going to change that to constrain diameter. We're going to call that, according to our drawing, that's, that's an outside diameter. It's going to be 18. And we're going to call this pulley outer diameter 1. I want that in caps locks. Pulley OD1. All righty. That is going to be 12. We're going to call that pulley ID 1. And we're going to take that one. And we're going to say 5. Yes. Alright, so let's just quickly do a little bit of housekeeping 18 12 and 5 all right so here we're going to do the same that's 18 we're going to call that pid2 right we're going to call 12 pid2 that one we're going to call 5 all right so you can sort of start seeing the pattern from here right and again we're going to say that one 18 that is POD 3. Right, just so I can get a bit line. That is 1912. And we're going to call this POD 3. And that one we're going to do 5. Alright, and a little bit of housekeeping again quickly. So there, there, and there. Alright, so now what I've done is I've drawn out our pulleys with the spacing that I want. Um, Alright. Now, the only other thing I need to keep in mind is how I'm going to use the inner diameter of that pulley to tie it to remember this is going to be our profile right this is going to be our profile over here 
and this is going to be the first part of that sketch but what I want to do is I want to tie the inner diameter of these pulleys I want to tie to our profile okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a point I'm going to put it on that circle but I'm going to constrain that point to that line all right now I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to say you and you are going to be 26.0 millimeters right so you can see it's moved everything forward all of these pulleys have now been moved forward so we're out of our sketch which is fine <coughs> All right, so now, well, I think that is, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I don't think I need much more. Um, I'm going to quickly put in a point on that pulley on the outer edge, and I'm going to constrain again that to this line. And I'm going to give this and this a diameter of, uh, not a diameter, a value of 2 millimeters. All right, so now you can see that these, all these lines have gone from a dark blue, like these three lines, to a light blue, which means that these circles are now fully constrained, that no matter what I do, I'm not going to be able to move these um, out of alignment. All right, now there is one other thing that I want to do concerning the pulleys is I want to set up an outer line from there to the back. All right, so we're going to zoom in there. I'm going to put on one more point. I'm going to put it on that outer pulley and I'm going to constrain that point To that line all right now because all of these are now tied to each other they can't move I can say I want that to be what are we gonna make it um, also two more I think let's make that two more all right so now you can see what has happened is that this this thing has gone and shrunk okay so I can pull that out and I can say that I want another point on that thing and I'm going to constrain to those two and then I'm going to say from there to there. I'm going to make that two more as well. All right, that's looking good. That's looking really good. All right, so I think we're done with the construction lines. Um, so you can see we've got a lot of measurements. Like I say, this can become very intimidating very very quickly but basically what we've done is we have now set out the belt spacing between our pulleys so that we can get the belt in and out um, so remember our belt is 1.5 millimeters I've made that 2 mil so there should be enough space to be able to thread the belt around those pulleys okay um, all right, I think I'm going to quickly now just let's do this. I'm going to quickly set that and that to be 
equal to that line. And then I'm going to give this a size of... I could leave it like that, but I don't want to. Um, it's getting a little bit big when you do that. Um, I mean, 60 mil. Is that really necessary? All right, so let's make this 40. Okay. Um, uh, you see, that's that's also still moving around. Go back to our construction, put a mark, um, a point on there, constrain it to that, make this two more, do the same on the back end over here. say that and that is also two mil yes okay all right so we've already got that constrained and then we can say just one more point on there and we constrain that to this And we say that to there is going to be two millimeters. All right. Now you can you can already see that there is a, there are a few things happening here. You can go out of construction again. You can see that this part of the sketch has turned a light green, which means that this part of the sketch is now constrained. All right, so no matter what I do to this, it won't move because it has been tied to a specified value. All right, so we can still move this line and we can still move, I just want to control Z that, we can still move this, all right, which we don't want. We want it constrained. All right, so I'm going to quickly constrain that well, it says I don't have to, but okay, whatever. So that's done. Um, then what I am going to do is I'm now going to set up this quickly. All right. Um, let's take the polyline again. We go from... there to there and we go keyboard M to get our arc and we want that straight so we go want that perpendicular and we go keyboard M again to get our arc and we close that off. All right, so now we have a slot, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that and that equal to th that center, did I not? I do apologize. I'll take the two points quickly. There we go. So those two points are now going to be equal to this line no matter what. All right. 
So let us quickly set that size. All right, so remember our pulley is like five mil. So we're going to put something through there that is five millimeters thick. So to give us a little bit of play, you know, we're going to make this 5.1. Okay, that is good. Then I want to take that radius and I want to say 5.1, which apparently it doesn't need to. And then I'm going to tie these two off, which should pretty much constrain that whole lot. We're going to make that 40. Really? Okay, so what did we do? That one. Alright, so that is constrained. Now, we're going to pull this down that it becomes quite a bit shorter. And we're going to put on one point there. One point there. Uh, we're going to constrain that to there. We're going to constrain that to there as well. And then we're going to give this a size, which should actually finally constrain the full sketch. <clears throat> the pulley is 18, so let's make that. 20. All right, so there are a lot of lines on this sketch, but the more measurements you have, the better this will work. Okay, now these eight degrees of freedom are going to come from these four blue construction lines that can still theoretically move around okay I'm not worried about that my sketch is fully constrained as you can see all the lines are green uh, so I'm going to close this out now all right and there we are left oh hang on hang on a little bit I haven't put in my holes for the pulleys why why didn't anyone tell me that you guys are gonna let me go out and then I make a complete ass of myself huh Jeez, you guys are really, you guys are really ugly with me. All right, so this one we're going to make 5.1 again, so that we have a little bit of space for our screws to go through, a little bit of play. We're going to go into that one again, take the circle, go like that. We're going to select that while we're at it, and we're going to say 5.1. All righty that boys and girls is it as you can see it's all constrained still so we're going to close that out and we're going to go back to our task so this is what our this is what our pulley plate is going to look like okay now just a couple of things that i want to do while i'm at it let's go back into that sketch all right so i think one of the well Two other things that I'm going to do quickly um, is I'm going to take that measurement and that measurement. Now you'll notice that once I did that, the sketch turned completely orange. Now, if we look at what is causing that, um, you can watch that over there. So I'll just have to do it again. Um, that point and that point all right so you see it's over constrained so what I am going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to call that to reference so 
it's only going to reference the that measurement for me all right it's not going to be part of the actual sketch because our sketch is for all intensive purposes basically already constrained okay and i'm going to give this a name of um let's say pulley plate width ppw right and just say okay then i'm just going to pull that out so that it's a lot more readable and then the other thing that i want is i want that point and that point all right so i uh, hope you guys are doing well um right here at this point i made a mistake with those two outer points um so just a quick word of warning don't match those measurements exactly um at the end of part two of this i will link in the stl file and the free cad um, files so that you can download them via google drive or whatever have a look at them and if you guys modify them or whatever drop me a link i'd like to see it um but yeah i made a boo-boo there so take those measurements now with a pinch of salt and uh let's get back to the video cheers because this is going to be our kick plate thickness all right remember this yellow line over here on our origin line the y-axis this is going to be um, the back of our kick plate and the front of the chassis right or the front of the um of the extrusion that we need to mount against all right so that again it's going to over constrain it call it to reference and call this um, kick plate width all right kpw all right um sorry call that okay all right um good that's it uh, we can close out there all right so this is what we were left with um this is the outline for our pulley plate all right now remember we were working from the top so it's going to extrude that way all right if we look at it from the front it's going to extrude up all right so let's go back to tasks um we tell it to pad 10 mil yeah that's fine 10 mil is all good um and then we are going to be left with that all right so that is the starting point for our pulley plate um, we have the two holes that our screws will come through for the stationary pulleys and we have our third slot for the tensioning pulley all right so we're not done there i just want to rename that pad quickly to pulley plate pad all right and you just go to asymmetric view again all right so now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to select that i'm going to select data plane i'm going to select that face so that it pads onto face one i'm going to select the datum plane and i'm going to sketch on our datum plane all right so now remember this is the back side of the pulley plate okay this is what we have to put the kick plate against so i'm just going to grab the rectangle tool I'm just going to pull out a rectangle yeah good enough right click out of it um, i'm going to give that a measurement of five moles because that's all it needs to be and i'm going to give that a measurement of i think it's 25 right 25 all right um okay so now in total i have 30 moles worth of space all right so 
we have five millimeters space between the bottom of the extrusion and the pulley plates underside and then we have to take into account that we're going to be putting up a 10 mil top plate as well all right so as you can see our sketch isn't constrained yet because I haven't given this width so I'm going to select those two points I'm going to go into there and then I'm going to go into the formula um, editor and I'm going to say did I rename that sketch yet uh, I don't think I renamed that sketch yet mm. nope Close out and so all right so let's quickly rename that sketch to PP sketch and then while we're at it we're going to rename this one to KP no no KP sketch all righty okay uh, I'm just going to reselect those two points quickly. Go into the formula editor. Then I'm going to say um, pp sketch dot constraints dot um, what would I say? ppw and enter out of it, and we're done our sketch is fully constrained right so I'm going to close that out um, and I'm going to go to tasks going to pad out that thing all right now we have to go into the formula editor again and it's um, what was it pp pp sketch dot constraints dot um, kick plate width right and we're going to say okay all righty good going to rename that we're going to call that kick plate what did I do there kick plate pad good all right now I can switch off that datum plane can collapse that um, right so I'm going to click on the kick plate pad I'm going to select a datum plane I'm going to click on that face tell it okay click on the datum plane select sketch all right so now we're going to do our top um, plate okay so again just going to grab the rectangle tool give it yeah sort of adjustments so I'm going to say that is going to be 10 more that is going to again be in the formula bar pp sketch dot constraints dot ppw all righty go out of that again and then i'm going to set that to a height of 25 more right that is it boys and girls so that's done can close out of that go to pad all right this has to be padded out 20 more all right good so that's done I can switch off the date and plane I can call this now um, Pulley plate blank. Mm, let's 
just maybe put in a space over there, keep everything uniform. All right, so now again, I'm going to click on that, click on date and plane, tell it I want that face. Click on the date and plane, select sketch. Now, what we want to do is we want to make holes. All right, so now we know at least that from there to there is going to be 20 more. Now, again, I'm just going to grab the rectangle tool, just do a mere rectangle, and you can see it's already just constrained it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, it's constrained it to the origin point, which is exactly what we want because that's the back of our extrusion, the front of our kick plate, or the front of our extrusion, back of the kick plate, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to give that a length of 20 and I'm going to give that a width of um, pp sketch dot constraints dot ppw and we're going to say okay and there we are fully constrained just like that um, so the next thing I'm going to do um, okay hang on I want that 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 and that to be construction all right so just a top tip if you didn't see what I did there all right so remember everything in green with the white lines is going to be visible now I don't want this to be visible I just want this to be reference so I select all the lines and I click over here on the construction um, on the construction icon and it turns everything blue so now I can use this as a reference block why do I want to do that well I want to get my holes into the center of our um, top plate but I also want to have them a certain distance away from from the um, from the side walls okay so I'm going to click on that hold control click on that go to the constraints and tell it that I want this to be formal all right because we're going to be using three mil screws So four mil should give us a bit of slack. All right. Then I'm going to go to that. I'm going to select that width at <clears throat> now let's make it twelve mil. Um, right, so 12 mil it's for the center of the hole. We're going to do the same on this side. I'm also going to make that 12 mil. All right, and then we want that to be the center of this. So we're going to click on that point going to click on those lines and we're going to tell it to oh okay it doesn't want to <laughs> um, all right no worry we know that this will be 10 more so it's just going to do come on i already did i want that one and that one to be 10 And I want that one, and that one. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. That one. So that one. And that one. I want that to be 10. And we're done.
Right, so that's it. Our holes are where they should be. Just pull that out the way. So we're going to close that out. Now you can see our two holes are sitting there. Okay, so we're going to switch off the datum plane. We're going to take the sketch and we're going to pocket. We're going to say to first. Okay, done. And uh, that should be pocketed yep, all the way through. All right, so now what we want is we want our countersunk holes. Okay, so click on that. Datum plane over there. Yes. Click on the datum plane. Sketch again. All right. And then again, we're just going to, just from the beginning, go into construction. Do a yeah, sort of outline, go back to normal, then of that I'm going to make 20, and this I'm again going to make pp sketch dot constraints dot ppw okay like blue so it's constrained because we used our origin point and then we're going to draw in our pocket holes now this is basically just the same as we did in the previous sketch that's going to be uh, Let's make it six. No, eight more. Whoa, what did I do there? Dude. <laughs> um, eight more, please. <laughs> All right, and we're going to say that height again is 12. The width is going to be 10 same here going to make that 12 and we're going to make that 10 good I'm going to close that out, so select the sketch, go into task and tell it to pocket, 5 more will be fine, thank you very much, switch off the, um, the datum plane and we should have, yep, we have pockets. All right, so now I just want to make these corners and everything like just a little bit less sharp. I'm going to leave this face and this face flat and the rest of the corners I'm going to um, I'm going to dull a bit. All right, so I think the first thing I want to do quickly is just get that line and uh, come on there it can be a little bit full of itself sometimes and I'm going to take that and I'm going to round it out to about two more alrighty Okay, that looks good. Now, wow. I am not rounded.
All right. All right, so the reason I wanted those both in is because every time you do a pocket or a fillet or something, it adds to this list. All right, and I'm, I'm not in the proverbial mood for a whole bunch of pads and fillets and pockets and whatever else. All right, so now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of our other edges and I'm going to fillet them. Click on a line, hold down control and start selecting lines. So everything I can see visibly. Now, while you're doing this, be careful not to click in this gray area. If you do that, it's going to deselect everything and you have to do it all from the beginning. So when we're rotating this, I'm going to make sure I'm on the arrow. Okay, that looks like everything over there. Now I have to swing around to the top. One more. And I have to do that, 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 that that, 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 and that. All right, um, I think that is it. Looks like it. So the only things that are going to be untouched is that, though those two faces where the extrusion has to go in. All right, so I'm going to hit fill it. One more should be fine. I'm going to tell it OK and that should be it. Going to isometric view again. And yep. Everything is nicely filleted, nicely rounded. Holes look good. Yep. All right, that's what we want. That looks good, that looks good, that looks good. I'm happy with that. Um, I am going to save that as a different name other than fillet. I'm going to call that um, final pulley plate. All right. Then I'm going to go to body. I'm going to rename body to pulley plate. All right. I've already renamed that to three pulley inline tensioner tutorial. All right, nice. So let's just save that and we're going to export that into an STL I'm going to excuse me I'm going to save you like that I'm going to close that out we're going to go into Explorer. We should have Final PP. All right. Okay, that that looks good. Um, the only thing I'm going to do now is if we let it lie down like this, we're going to have one crap ton of material. You know, in full. Uh, not in full. Um, support material. 
to remove. So I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to put it onto this face. Just like that. I'm going to move this this way a bit. Um, so that I don't have the plate crashing into the camera. Um, let's go into our settings. That looks good. That looks good. Our speed we can drop down to. We can drop down to 40 for that. Should we leave it at 60? Ah, what the hell. Let's leave it at 60. So I leave it at 60. Gonna save that. Let's slice it. Alright, so we have a little bit of a brim around it, and we have our support material, and we have the actual part. Alright, that looks good to me. Um, I'm going to save that up, and then we're going to go to the printer. So, uh, I'll see you in a bit.